Hi friends, uh, this time I thought I'll do a program with editors, a uh, lot of my colleagues and co-editors around India who have been uh, very kind enough to participate in this question and answer and I think it would uh, help uh, the editing students with a lot of unexplained answers and uh, the editors that are going to be involved are Nitin Bey who's done films like uh, Razi, Gully Boy, Masan, then Anthony, uh, he is a very popular editor who's done a lot of films in many languages too and he has been associated with big ticket films like Indiran and 2.0. And then we have Antra Lahari, who's done very interesting films in her career. And recently she did Shakuntala too. And then we have Shravan from Hyderabad, who's worked on very nice films there. And then we have Kail Prabhi, who's done quite a bit of work in Tamil and Telugu too. And he has done a number of uh, big ticket and blockbuster films also and then we have Namrata Rao who has done very different films like Ishkia, uh, Love Sex or Dhoka, Band Baja Bharat and from Kerala we have uh, Mahesh Narayan who is uh, also a director now and he has done some excellent films and he has also edited some very good uh, films in Malayalam and also in Tamil and then we have Manoj Kanot who is from the FTI and uh, he, ha he has won a national award for his uh, short film and then he has graduated to editing a lot of features in the Malayalam film industry. Now let's start the session. How important is it for you to be part of the film from the scripting stage? Or do you think it's better for you to start working directly after the shoot without knowing the script so that you get a sense of objectivity into the process? If the later, how do you judge whether to accept a film or not? And in general also, what are the parameters that you look into that make you green light a project? Firstly, I definitely think uh, it is important for me to read the script much before it goes on floor. Uh, because that's the first time I'm sort of interacting with the project and uh, it's the it's sort of like the initial sort of a deciding factor in terms of whether the project excites me at a certain level on what grounds it excites me also uh, and what sort of whether it's the narrative that excites me or the scope of the film that excites me or the uh, or the challenges that set within, inside the film that excites me because sometimes you are, because now that I've worked in different genres over the period of like the last few years I look for things that like they are I look for different elements that sort of excites me it doesn't bound to sort of one element and I'm pretty much very open towards ideas where uh, where if even if it's slightly loose and even if it's slightly uh, open uh, like more like when I say that slightly loose I mean more like he, uh, at least like even if the script is not fully ready but at least where we can have discussion where we can have sort of a comment going on and like just sort of to develop the script further and the shooting is just uh, sort of setting the ground for the next stage so yeah script is very important for me and uh, uh, though I don't hold any notion if like somebody narrates me the story and doesn't give me the script and if the narration works for me that also is good to go because it's all about like I feel filmmaking is purely conviction and it's a lot of like people just coming together with that conviction and sort of making that happen and for me that is more important in terms of what is the voice and what is what is that we are wanting to say and if if I, if the director infuses that in me or the screenplay writer or whatever, the script infuses that in me, that pretty much sets me up in terms of like, okay, this is what I'm going to do it. It is very important for the editor to, to be on the script. Uh, but my process, my individual, my individual process is 
such that which I don't advise for the young editors, but still, this is what I do. Uh, is uh, I like to. I, I, I've been in the ad industry, like I've been working on ad films and all that. And the way I used to work on ad films was uh, uh, the rushes just come in and uh, uh, they give me a, uh, a particular storyboard which I don't look at. And uh, I just go through the rushes, that's it, from take one, from short one, take one to, to the end of the rushes. I just read through the rushes. I try to figure out the story by myself and I try to do my own edit. Uh, which 99% of the time is, is right. So I'm so used to that, uh, not listening to the uh, script or not even seeing the storyboard. Uh, I find it a little challenging for me because uh, as I'm working on it, uh, I get to know the story. So for films, films that have a lot of graphics and a lot of things involved, like for example, uh, 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 Robo and Enderen and all that, uh, and uh, coach and all that. There's lots of graphics and also that time I usually sit with the director and discuss the, the screenplay as well as the story and we do all that before time. Now uh, for the fact that whether the script is good or not, that I just take a call straight away because uh, mostly most of my directors are obviously if some producer has accepted to do this or if some actor and artist has, has ex ex accepted to do this film and obviously the script should be good. For me, I think uh, whether good or otherwise, I think it's like a challenge. Whether it's good, if it's good, I want to make it even better as an editor, uh, as I, I like to you know change, I like to play around with the screenplay, try to do stuff and, and somehow make it big, you know, even if it is uh, not that much of a great script, but still again, since I took it up, I, I, I want to I want to push push it and, and somehow bring it there. There is a belief among uh, filmmakers that a film happens uh, in between a writer's table and an editor's table. And uh, I believe it's, it's mostly true. But uh, as a practicing editor, uh, uh, I, I believe that the final locking of the screenplay uh, takes place at the editing table. Uh, lots of things get changed during the, the process of shooting. Uh, sometimes additional dialogues get added, uh, emotional quotient of the scene changes, uh, there will be changes in the structure. So in my opinion, uh, definitely the final shape of the, the screenplay happens on the editing table. Uh, more than this, the editor can contribute a lot during the writing also. Uh, it's always uh, good to have an editor uh, on board while the writing is going on. He doesn't have to be the throughout uh, with the, the writer uh, when he writes, but uh, whenever is a draft ready, he can go and check it and give feedback. Uh, and besides this, like uh, there's one more point I would like to add uh, is these days because of digital technology, uh, filmmakers have this tendency to shoot a lot more than what we need. Uh, if an experienced editor is involved during the writing phase. Uh, he can point out unnecessary elements in the screenplay uh, which is going to increase the shooting time and the budget uh, like uh, examples like if a character is not really well defined in the script uh, issues with the flow or uh, scenes that don't have any emotional impact uh, predictable areas in the, in the screenplay uh, if a scene becomes too talky uh, or like uh, extra length of a scene etc etc all those things that that uh, all these things can uh, pinpoint by an editor and uh, the writer can revise a draft according to the feedbacks given by the editor uh, you may not have the luxury to choose your project you might have to take up everything that comes in your way just to get established it happened with me so many times like uh, early in my career then uh, when you grow your filmography and establish your place in the industry uh, you will have the liberty to choose projects but uh, sometimes that will take a considerable amount of time uh, like in my case there are many factors uh, when i choose a script uh, sometimes a script would be so exciting 
that uh, I don't really worry about the monetary parts or monetary benefit. Uh, sometimes the, uh, the exciting factor would be the technicians and actors. Uh, yeah, but uh, predominantly um, the deciding factor is the script uh, but um, <laughs> there are exceptions like uh, uh, if you get chance to work with your uh, childhood uh, hero or childhood screen idol uh, you just jump to it and grab the opportunity uh, like uh, you don't really worry about the quality of the script and all. What is more interesting for you working on the big budget superstar event films or the smaller story oriented films which has more scope for you to explore your craft? Uh, definitely yes, definitely. The uh, big films give you a uh, visiting card, they give you a uh, you know, uh, 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 foothold uh, in the industry but uh, I would prefer uh, smaller films because uh, you are not preset with certain conditions. Uh, the smaller films let you explore more, better, better your craft and uh, also the smaller films, the content uh, comes out, usually comes out quite strong. Uh, I, I personally experienced this while I was doing Kabali. I was also parallelly doing uh, this film called uh, Kidai and Karnai Manu uh, which were an excellent script and uh, we, the script needed a push. Uh, someone uh, from uh, uh, the industry so I, I tried to do my best for that film it was produced by Eros uh, smaller films yes the, those when I started off I, I really wanted to work on big films but as we go by in our career uh, the smaller films uh, do find a place in your heart and they, they also try and uh, give you a sense of satisfaction better than the bigger films I'm not saying they're bad or they're good they're, the smaller ones are good but uh, to, in terms of exploring your craft, the smaller films give you way much uh, better opportunity than the bigger films because the bigger ones have a lot of commercial templates, uh, uh, business templates uh, that come along with them. So I guess, yeah, uh, my heart right now lies in the smaller ones with uh, better scripts. Personally, I find both of them interesting, but in uh, different ways. Uh, Star's film needs an image-centric approach. Uh, for example, the introduction uh, scenes of a star, uh, which often gets into the realms of fantasy. Uh, for editing such a scene, I try to get into the shoes of a fan who would be whistling while watching that particular scene. So I uh, try to trip on this uh, mind-bending surreal experience and uh, uh, coming to smaller story-oriented films. Uh, I think because of the many constraints, the film is uh, written and executed in a very personal and uh, uh, intimate manner. Uh, and the process of editing such a film ensures that there is a dialogue happening between the uh, editor and the uh, director's philosophies. So personally, I feel uh, uh, this experience is very enriching. I certainly love working on smaller films more because uh, there is so much more involvement and um, scope to collaborate on a smaller film far more. When there is a star involved, of course, I mean, it depends on the director, but usually there is not like as much to do. So I prefer smaller films, but unfortunately, <laughs> smaller films don't pay so much. And uh, I mean, you know, because I don't do too many films at a time, so it becomes very difficult for me to pay my EMIs. So I have to do the bigger ones also in between sometimes. So I mean, but I do try and uh, select scripts that I enjoy, even then. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't always happen, but I try my best. How does it affect you when the critics blame the editor for the excessive length in a film? Is it justified? I did get very upset uh, initially when I was just starting off and um, you see these reviews where critics say, oh, you know, the editor could have made the film crisper and uh, made it uh, shorter and it's too long, etc. But I think I'm very used to this kind of criticism now, so I just ignore it. And in fact, I find it really funny when critics uh, use words like crisp to define the edit. Um, and it's even funnier when they say the editing is good but could be better because I just get flashbacks of my school report card. But anyway, the fact of the matter is that uh, as any film person will tell you, 
the duration of the film is not in the hands of the editor there are many factors at play such as the nature of the screenplay studio decisions directorial decisions um, that one has to consider but i think it's in a way it's forgivable if people think editors are responsible for length because it's the only tangible impression of editing they have so skills like rhythm pace uh, cutting together performances these are all ideas that are too nuanced too intangible and too invisible and they can only be picked up by highly trained eyes also writing directing and <clears throat> editing are inherently so intertwined with each other that i feel it's quite pointless to just judge editing in isolation i've been hearing this blame uh, from a lot of uh, critics that critics and friends and also uh, from fellow filmmakers that the film is not moving uh, uh, and uh, uh, you know the uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, lags in the film and uh, editor you you are responsible but uh, why could i have why could i have made it slightly tighter or uh, you know uh, you could have avoided all the all such things but this uh, entire discussion has to happen uh, uh, from the writing stage so uh, the major thing is <clears throat> when uh, when the writing uh, happens you know uh, once w- w- once that reading session happen like, like where, where all the crew members are going to sit and read together read the script uh, together there itself we will understand that whether this uh, whether where are the where they, the either the main issues were the story is not uh, proceeding forward i mean or, or moving uh, uh, forward so at uh, at that stage itself we can do a lot of things so there you know there uh, uh, eventually what happens is that okay uh, th- th- there is a shoot date which is which is almost announced and we can't delay it more so let's let's try it let's shoot it and then uh, uh, let let's figure something out in the editing table so uh okay we can feel a lot of things in the editing table but still uh, uh the the main uh, uh decisions uh, are to be made uh, in the writing stage itself that's where that's where all those decisions have, have, uh, has to happen so where is this uh, uh idea of lag coming from uh, that is the that is a major uh, uh, issue there you know uh, at times where uh, i've seen directors telling musicians composers where you know you 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 should you uh, you, you should throw your music from beat to beat okay uh, because they 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 that's that's where we go to engross your audience into it okay uh, okay uh, it can happen it can happen either way it can happen but it can be helpful also but uh, uh, at, at at times this happens because you know we are not sure about the content we are going to make that's that's the uh, that's a problem when i started my career uh, obviously like these kind of reviews did affect me a lot uh, but uh, after a point it stopped bothering me uh, the level of appreciation and judgment would be different for each person uh, i completely respect that uh, but as a collaborator uh, we like editors spend months to construct a final edit from a sh- from the short footage so we are helping the director to achieve his vision through a medium called uh, cinema the duration of the film is what is what, what the duration of the cin- film is what is required to convey that particular vision of the director but unfortunately sometimes that won't really communicate with the audience and critics but yes sometimes there are situations where the lengths could have cut uh, really really short why did you choose editing as a career and do you think you made the right choice and what is the advice you would give a newcomer to the editing field so why did i choose editing as a career well i didn't choose it i mean it was not a very thought out decision of uh, becoming an editor i was actually running away from my it you know career and uh, i just had this vague idea that i want to be an artist but because nobody in my family was an artist or had done anything other than academics so i was not really sure of what i want to do and uh, a friend of mine was applying to film school and actually that's how i ended up applying to srfti and even then i was not very sure about which stream to take but my parents were so upset that you know i am uh, not following my studies in it so far and taking them forward uh, that i thought that maybe editing is a good bet because 
you know at least after three years of studying i can at least join a studio and uh, you know get a normal salary so actually that's how it started i had no idea i was not even very film literate to be honest when i went to film school it was only once i reached there that it just opened my mind completely and it just well i mean to use the phrase it blew my mind i didn't think initially that i made the right choice because you know i mean nobody knows about editing and uh, i mean there is no one way of doing it and direction is just so much more glamorous you know but but in hindsight now after 10 odd years of working as an editor i think i have made the best choice because one editing is so close to the actual process of film making and secondly it teaches you so much about humanity about uh, people around you about life about you know what how we react to stories and the whole subtext or the psychology of storytelling you know which is the most uh, enjoyable thing for me about editing yes it was very accidental for me uh, i never wanted to get into cinema because i'm a third generation guy uh, my father was an assistant director my grandfather used to be a production manager and all that growing up you know uh, you see how uh, hard uh, they worked and how the payments were not uh, regularized or uh, you know the work wasn't available all the way all the time uh, i never wanted to get into cinema so my uh, my chosen career path was actually biotechnology but unfortunately i couldn't get into that because of marks that i scored in my uh, you know Twelfth standard, but yeah, but, so I had a year to wait, and uh, that's where I went in for a part-time job, and uh, and uh, that's when I discovered I really had the editor uh, in me, you know, uh, or rather the passion towards editing was there. Uh, that's how the career started, and I would say yes. Uh, back then, maybe you know, like ten or twelve years before, uh, I would uh, had a I would have had a different opinion. But today, an editor is one of the most important pillars in any form of post-production. You take an OTT. You take it. You take TV uh, serials. You take uh, films. Uh, you take other content. YouTube uh, content. Oh, the editor is one is one that puts everything together. And uh, yes, the, the career path. I would definitely say there's a lot more exciting uh, 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 opportunities that are going to come for all of us. And uh, this is one of the most uh, golden periods for post production uh, guys. I, I I believe in that. To be frank, I always wanted to be a filmmaker. uh that's a truth uh but uh, but i was not sure where and how to start so because i am uh, i'm coming from a small town in in in, in north kerala and uh, uh, the exposure towards any kind of films was very limited when I, during that time like early in early 2000 so i thought um, uh, i felt joining ftii would be the best to widen my uh, knowledge and uh, understand and learn the craft and it uh, actually did uh, so uh, as i slowly started understanding the true essence of editing it made uh, a tremendous impact on me and i totally loved it uh, for me editing is not not the tech not just a technical job uh even though like uh, there is technological tools involved like the softwares and other things involved um, but it's not a it's not just a technical job uh, it's a cerebral practice uh, you make with your intuitions and aesthetics with the help of uh, technology so what is my advice to newcomers i always give two advices <laughs> one is that uh, you have to enjoy observing life because that makes editing really easy you know then you can even tell less is more you don't really have to you know now that we have a visual database of so many years as human beings we don't really need to spell out everything and uh, it helps to just know you know what what are the reactions what what does a blink in the beginning of a shot Uh, what does it do when it's at the end of a shot if i want to show a cat climbing onto a wall and jumping off do i need to show the whole thing is it important for the you know storytelling or the emotion to show the whole thing just observing just being present when um, around people i think that really helps i know it's weird but for me it is the biggest part of being an editor just observing 
and the second thing is that editing is a karat vidya so you have to keep doing it the more you do it it's almost like if there was a god of editing he comes and sits with you and blesses you because you are present every day you know on the table and uh, the more you do it it i think starts getting internalized and you know you're able to focus on newer things on enhancing the edit a little more than just trying to find the basic solutions coming to newcomers uh, but i think there's nothing as an advice but i would just say how i work uh, uh, i guess uh, that's more relatable than anything else so my basic approach is to watch every film twice uh, which of them that i like i watch it with uh, with the audio first and then go back and with the audio and go back and watch uh, for its uh, uh, cut itself when you take out the audio the distraction uh, i wouldn't say distraction but some of the cuts are masked with the audio itself so all that you can analyze and start learning more and more, more better uh, in terms of education uh, there are uh, i would say uh, learning uh, the craft in a film school is definitely it definitely gives you a, a, a ladder up, uh, or a step up uh, and also knowing about the software in and out uh, knowing about it and how we can crack it how we can push the software or the uh, system that you're going to use uh, knowing all these things on top of it reading a lot of books about films that are related to films uh, i would uh, say uh, i'm a big fan of um, Mr Walter Mack uh, he wrote a book called in the blink of an eye uh, which really uh, made me rethink about the way i work and uh, i work uh, the way i did uh, until today so uh, that is something that has changed my career path uh, so i would suggest people to re- go read more about films or about the career path that they choose you know whether we whether we film editing be it uh, sound recording be it uh, uh, color grading whatever whatever uh, uh, that they want to choose and another thing is like if you are working in a studio or an uh, editing room show tremendous patience when you cut anything when you edit anything uh, don't uh, really get uh, restless approach it like like a like a meditating practice uh, i have uh, i have seen uh, many student editors uh, cut the rushes while they while watch it while uh, they preview it uh please don't do that mistake it's it's i never did that and uh, uh, watch the rushes like if possible watch the rushes as many times as possible uh and um, then getting started is the hardest part in your like uh, editing career once you cross that um, you are going to be super confident when you approach any project the rest of the questions we will air it as part 2